Okay, so moving on to our interesting question, which is how far away are the stars and how do we measure that distance? I want to ask you a bit of a warm up question, which is this. Um, when we talk about distances here on Earth, sometimes we refer to them colloquially with a time, right? Especially if we're talking about traveling there. So suppose somebody tells you that it takes two hours to drive to Portland. You're gonna assume that they're averaging 60 miles an hour on I-5. How would you use that information to find the distance to Portland if you didn't know the distance? So uh, as the other chat questions, uh, take a minute to think about your response and type it in the chat, but don't hit send until I tell you to. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of similar ideas coming through, which is that we make use of the travel time stated and the average distance that we assume, or average speed that we assume in order to calculate the, the distance. And if we multiply our 60 miles per hour, uh, you could rewrite this MPH, you could write it miles divided by hours. So then when you multiply by two hours, the hours would cancel out. And so then 60 times two would give us 120 miles more or less. And the same exact idea applies when we talk about distance to the stars. Uh, and this is actually the basis for the unit that we call the light year. So even though the word year is in this unit's name, it is not a unit of time, it's a unit of distance. And it's based around the fact that light has a speed limit, nothing can travel faster than that. And it's about 2.9 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So um, when, we, when we talk about you know, travel time to Portland, we say Portland is two hours from Eugene, but we don't actually mean that the distance is two hours, right? We of course mean the distance is 120 miles. And the light year is very similar. When we say Alpha Centauri, which is our nearest star, when we say Alpha Centauri is four light years from the sun, what we actually mean is that it takes light four years to travel there and it travels at light speed. So if we wanted to, we could take this, um, this cosmic speed limit in the units of meters per second, multiply it by the number of seconds in a year, and we would have the light year in terms of meters. And I'm not gonna go through it, but uh, one light year for your information is about nine and a half times 10 to the 15 meters. Right. So the light year isn't the only unit of distance to the stars, but it's, I guess I would argue one of the most fundamental distance units uh, because it's based on the speed of light, which is an absolute known constant. Okay, so let's suppose that we want to send a signal with light. Let's think about what this cause speed limit actually means. If Alpha Centauri, our nearest star, is 4.4 light years away, and we send a message to Alpha Sen with light, then assuming that there's an intelligent uh, civilization there that's going to read our signal and send us back one straight away, um, how long should we wait before we check for a response? Okay, um, I see votes split between B and C, which is fine. So um, I'm not gonna have you discuss this in groups, uh, but there's one thing you may have overlooked. So let's say uh, this blue circle represents Earth and then that star is Alpha Centauri. If we send Alpha Sen a signal, it will take 4.4 years before our signal reaches them. And then if they send a signal back, we have to wait another 4.4 years while the light back to us. And that's assuming they respond immediately. Um, whereas if I was in extraterrestrial civilization, receiving a signal for the first time from another intelligent civilization, I would take my time to respond. But anyway, so 8.8 .8 years would be the fastest we could possibly hear back. Okay, and this idea that light takes time to travel through the universe and get places and, and carry information about the stars or about us with it, that means that we can actually look back in time by looking farther away in space. So what we're seeing, the light that we see when we look up at the stars is, has spent uh, years coming to us. Uh, the shortest it could have possibly come from a near, nearby star would be 4.4 years, right? Everything else is farther than that. All the other stars are farther away. So when we look at Alpha Centauri, we're seeing it as it was 4.4 years ago. If we look at a star that's 50 light years away, we're seeing it as, as it was 50 years ago, et cetera. So I think this is pretty cool because this is how we can actually see back in time, back in the history of our universe, just by looking farther and farther afield. Related to the um, prefixes. So SI prefixes, 
are represented by letters and sometimes by Greek letters. And those take the place of the 10 to the number, right? So they take the place of the exponent in our scientific notation. And so when I look at the size of um, the distance from the Milky Way to Andromeda in light years, I get 2.54 times 10 to the six light years. Which one of these correctly describes that distance is a way to restate that number. All right, so if you haven't seen SI prefixes for a long time, again, Appendix C should probably be your friend. And let me just go through these so you know which these are because these are pretty common ones. Um, mu is micro, which is 10 to the minus six. So that's definitely not right. That's a very small SI prefix. Lowercase m is milli, like millimeter, and that's 10 to the minus three. Um, kilo, like kilometer, that's 10 to the plus three. Mega is 10 to the positive six. So that's our answer here, that the distance from Milky Way to Andromeda is 2.54 mega light years. And the last one, capital G is giga, which is 10 to the plus nine. Um, let's see, we'll also come across nano in this class, which is 10 to the minus nine. Uh, so you'll see that next week. And when you see it, nanometers, 10 to the minus nine meters, that's what that means. <laughs>